Film photography is expensive. Film cameras and film are going up in price every year. Scanning with a lab can be pricey for high-res scans, so where can we cut costs? I'm sure many of you have no interest in developing film at home, and that's fine. So what about scanning? Here are the pros. Scanning at home cuts out lab scan costs, clearly, allows you to scan at any resolution you'd like, and allows you to scan with the film info rebate borders. You will also have a lot more creative control over your negatives. Here are the cons, time, and a little bit of money. So let's cover what you're gonna need. First, a scanner. I work with Epson's V550, their cheapest film scanner. I got it for about $130 on Amazon. It's capable of scanning 35 millimeter film, 120 film, and comes with holders for both of those. And if you have mounted 35 millimeter slides, you can scan those as well. This is the only scanner I've ever used at home and I love it. Now you've probably heard that Epson scanners are slow and that the color that they produce just does not compare to lab scans. It is true that the scanner is slow if you're using the original Epson scan software. Epson scan two has been released and oh my God, it's so fast. I can scan a roll of 120 film, that's 10 exposures, 48 bit color, 2500 DPI, and a TIFF, which is like a raw scan, one minute per negative. What? What about the color on Epson scan two? Still trash. And here's why. Epson scan wasn't built to get the colors of Portra and Cine Still and Ekdar correct. It's made to get film negatives on a computer. Like somebody who wants to take their family film negative collection and turn them into digital images. So you'll need Epson scan two to scan your negatives into your computer as positives and then convert them in another application that's dedicated to getting the colors of each film stock to where they should be. And that application, well, <laughs> plugin, is called Negative Lab Pro. Negative Lab Pro is a Lightroom plugin that converts film to color images, mimicking lab scanners like the Frontier and the Neuritsu. If you've had your film scanned at a lab, most likely they're using a multi-thousand dollar Neuritsu or Frontier scanner. So Negative Lab Pro is mimicking the color conversion from those scanners. Sounds promising, right? It is. It's amazing. It's changed my entire life when it comes to home scanning. If you don't believe me, try out the free trial. So let's scan. Wipe down your scanner with something like a microfiber cloth. Now you've got two options for putting your film in the scanner. You can put them in the included holders, or if you want film borders, you can put them flat on the bed. If you want those borders, your film might curl up. Now you've got a couple options. Tape down the corners or invest in a piece of glass to put over it. I suggest you get a piece of anti-Newton ring glass. Otherwise, the pressure from the glass on either side of the negative can create these Newton rings. Check the link in my description for some anti-Newton ring glass. Open Epson scan and go to professional mode. You are scanning negatives, but we aren't converting to color with Epson scan, so you're gonna choose positive to leave it in its negative state. Moving on, we're gonna scan some medium format film. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna scan at 2500 DPI, 48 bit color and as a TIFF. Now let's scan. Okay, the scan is done. You've made a folder for all of your files to land in. Now you're gonna open Lightroom and import those TIFFs just like any image you would import into Lightroom. Now let's get into the Negative Lab Pro part of things. Take your color balance tool on your first image and color balance on the border. We do this to set the black point for the image so the conversion is color correct. Film borders by nature should just be pure black because they're literally the part of the film that's not being hit by light when you take a photo. Once that's done, crop in on your image so that none of the border is showing. We don't want Negative Lab Pro to convert thinking that the border is part of the color of the image. File, plugin extras, Negative Lab Pro. Your source is a tip and I recommend you setting your color model to Frontier. I have my pre-saturation set to very low and border buffer at 5%. Now hit convert. If you're on this part of the step, you're looking at your image now and you're taken aback at how great Negative Lab Pro has converted the colors, I'm assuming. <laughs> anyway, now a Negative Lab Pro editing panel has come up where you can make adjustments to the exposure and the color and such. Sometimes I'll change the brightness and contrast within this finder and make a few color adjustments if something seems off. And before I forget, make sure you're sleeving your film after you scan them so they have somewhere to go once you're done scanning them or else they're gonna collect dust and get ruined. So that's it. You just scan your film at home. If you want a little bit more proof that Negative Lab Pro is one of the better choices for scanning at home, look no further. In just a second, three images are gonna come on the screen. It'll be an Epson scan, a Frontier scan from a lab, and a Negative Lab Pro scan, all right next to each other of the same image.
I think you'll find that Negative Lab Pro looks just as good, if not better, than lab scans, especially since you're given so much extra versatility and free resolution range when scanning. As far as Epson scan goes, it is usable, but as a film photographer, I don't think that I should be fighting my scanner to get my film stocks to look the way they should. I shouldn't have to do a ton of work in post to bring them back to life. If these comparisons aren't convincing you enough, you might just need to see it with your own photos. Get Negative Lab Pro's free trial off their website. I think they offer like 12 free conversions. And once you see the differences with your own photos, maybe you'll be swayed. By the way, guys, this video is not sponsored or affiliated with Negative Lab Pro. I just stand by the product with all my heart. It saved so much scanning time and time I used to spend trying to get my negatives to look okay. If you got any other questions, leave them down in the comments below. Hopefully you'll try out my method and maybe you'll like it. I'm Linus from Linus and His Camera. See ya.